Now we move on to the types of subjects and the techniques in representing them. The word subject simply refers to the main idea that is presented in the artwork. It is simply the who or what the art is all about. It may be objective, but it can also be abstract. Okay? It is simply the essence of the piece. Now, there are factors that may affect an artist's choice of subject. We have medium, time, patronage, and development. For example, for medium, it has something to do with availability, the kind of medium, uh, the skill that uh, may interfere or, that, or may help the artist in manipulating the chosen medium. Time. Okay, so of course, history is very apparent in most famous artworks. It is because um, events in a particular era or particular period in time will definitely have something to contribute in the creation of an art. If an event is or if an occurrence is pressing during an artist's lifetime, then definitely it would appear or it would be evident in his work. So one very good example, uh, No Limit here in our country, was written by Jose Rizal because it's out of the need for a revolution or for a change of mindset for people to join the, the uh, revolt against the abuses of our previous government. Third, patronage that the artist has. So it's sponsorship, the backing. So if this, if the artist has uh, people who favor him or who support him, fund him, then would most probably his artworks would uh, be images of these uh, affluent people who pay for his skill, for his works. Development, okay, it's related to time. So, for example, um, when the when technology improved or as technology improves over the years we are seeing different forms of artworks with mixed media okay created by young artists okay so artists no longer stick to old ways they make uh, they look into these uh, classic ways as inspirations to create new forms. Okay, so these are the factors affecting choice of subject. What are the types of subjects and styles of representing them? So these are the different types of subjects. These are the, the things, the beings that we normal or and the themes that we normally see in Paintings, for example, we have landscapes, seascapes, cityscapes, still life. So, example, uh, a basket of fruits placed on a table or a pile of books on a surface somewhere in a patio. Okay. Animals, portraits, figurines. Everyday life scenarios, real life, history and legend, religion and mythology, dreams and fantasies. Okay. So how do we represent these subjects? If your style is realism, then the appearance of your subject or subjects look normal. There's nothing, there is nothing weird about them. You paint what you see. Abstraction is another style. Abstraction is simplifying or simply reducing details. For example, instead of uh, painting an, an apple which looks real, you would simply uh, paint a, a, a red circle in the middle of your canvas and then sticking out of, on top of it is a green line. Okay, this abstraction already. 
Next, distortion. So when you distort an image, uh, proportion area, proportions are arranged differently from natural appearance. So it looks weird. It looks sometimes ugly. It doesn't look appealing at all. Surrealism. So it's a combination of realism and distortion. So it's dreamlike. It's as if you're looking at an image which is a, a, a representation of a dream. Okay, example, uh, an air balloon, uh, but ex instead of an actual air balloon lifting the basket in the air, the air balloon is instead a cloud, a fluffy white cloud. Okay, so these are the styles of representing subjects and these are the types of subjects so when you paint so remember your midterm exam is an original painting you may go back to this lecture choose a subject are you going to paint an animal will you be representing a real life scenario are you inclined to paint something about a favorite mythological or folklore creature. Okay, it's up to you. And then you, of course, would need to choose a style of representing it. This is the last part of the lecture, groups of art or types of art. Art may be grouped according to their forms. First, we have visual art or visual arts. Visual arts are, of course, visual in nature. Examples are painting, ceramics, drawing, sculpture, crafts, design, printmaking or prints, photographs, and buildings or architectural designs. Art may be considered literary if it's, of course, written, okay? and they may be fiction or non-fiction, prose or poetry. Art may also be popular, pop art, okay, or modern. So when we say pop art, it means it's the kind of art that showcases what is in or what is trendy, what is well-liked or prevalent, such as Romance novels, computer games, music videos, manga. Art is performing when human body, face, and presence are used as media. There's movement. Okay, examples are music, dance, theater. Now, we also have digital arts. Of course, digital arts are technology or computer aided. Art may also be grouped according to scope. Artworks or art forms may be grouped according to media or medium used and forms and according to purpose. When art forms are grouped according to their purposes, these are the types. First type are the practical arts or useful arts. They are also sometimes called functional arts. So these are the arts which are directed to produce crafts, artifacts and utensils for the satisfaction of human needs. So these are the man-made uh, artworks, in quotation marks, which were made or which are made to to aid us in our daily activities. Okay, so for example, what are the examples of man-made artworks in quotation marks that help us or that aid us in our in our daily activities? We have cutlery, plates, we have chairs. Okay. Next, liberal arts. Liberal arts are directed toward intellectual growth so uh, the purpose is to teach man to participate in civic life 
Okay, academically, uh, liberal arts are subjects like academic subjects like philosophy, uh, literature, physical sciences. They're, they're like gen ed requirements. On the other hand, the fine arts are focused towards creative activity or the contemplation of the mind and to uplift the spirit. Examples are music, theater, visual art, the performing arts. Major arts, the purpose of major arts is to involve people to allow them to express themselves. Minor arts are for creation. Okay, example, decorative arts, popular arts, graphic arts, plastic arts, for pleasure. Okay, so these are the types of art according to their purposes. When art forms are grouped according to the media used in creating artwork or outputs, we have these types. Plastic and graphic arts are those which are developed through space and are perceived by the sense of sight. Plastic arts are art forms which involve physical manipulation of, of a medium which may be molded or modeled such as clay. So examples of outputs under, graph, under plastic art are sculptures or ceramics. However, sometimes the term also may be used for all the visual arts, such as painting, film, and photography, as opposed to uh, our, this one, literature and music, phonetic arts. Okay, sounds and words as media of expression. Kinetic arts, of course, we have the art forms that require element, the element of rhythm, okay, dancing. Pure arts are the art forms or the art form that takes only medium of expression like sound in music and color in painting. So there is no combination of uh, media. So if the output is expected to be music, then sound is the only medium used to create it okay it is in contrast with mixed arts mixed arts take more than one medium okay such as the opera which combines music poetry and drama okay so these are the forms or types of art according to media if you want to read more about the points mentioned in this lecture, you may visit or look for these references. This is the end of lesson one.